and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten and we're going to continue our part four trend and we're going to talk about our favorite and what we think are the best part fours yeah. of horror movie franchises. Top four part fours. Halloween four, which is probably one of our favorite part four movies of all time. Probably one of the best. Yeah. We have an episode completely dedicated to part four. You want to click the link and watch the full on retrospective of Halloween 4. If you haven't seen Halloween 4, it's basically Michael Myers has been in a coma for a decade <laughs> since the events of part two. He's being transferred to a different hospital and he hears that he has a living relative, a niece whose name is Jamie, which wakes him up from the coma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then he goes off to find and kill Jamie. So what makes Halloween 4, a good movie. It's the story. He learns of a niece, so another family member that he's got to go and kill. It's a good way to show what happened to him from the last movie. And then it's also a good way for him to get released back into the general public. One of my favorite things about this movie is the atmosphere. Yeah. I really love the atmosphere and the look of the movie. The, the opening credits it sets the tone for the movie so well. It's the most Halloween feeling movie of them all. The characters are fantastic in this movie. The kills are fantastic fantastic in this too. And they're dialed the back a little bit. Yep. It's not so silly. Brute force in his hands. Yeah, because he's a strong man. There's not that much blood in this movie either, right? Which no. kind of harks back to the first movie. And there's Hoffman in it. Loomis! Loomis! <laughs> <laughs> this brings us to our next one, and that's Friday the 13th Part 4. Starts right after the third one, where they put him on the gurney, take him to the morgue. I guess he's dead. Comes to life and goes back to hunting and killing. But this time he has to take on a little bastard, Corey Feldman. This one, not as campy as the third one, right? Yeah, that's what I like about it. The third one is pretty campy. You got the disco yeah. music, you got the really defined, stupid characters like the hippie couple, yeah. the bikers, the jokester Shelly. Would, Would you, you be, be yourself? yourself? You look, look like, like this. Me. Back to an actual serious tone. Yeah, exactly. Kind of kind of more like the first and the second one, right? Yeah. The kids, the group of kids who, of course, Jason goes off and kills, uh, they do a really good job of, like, building all their characters. And you get to know them, and you get to like them. And Crispin Glover's character, you really get to like that guy. Oh, yeah. And... Yeah, they're very defined. Yeah. Yeah, which is good. The kills are great. It's, like, one of the hallmarks of this movie. One of our favorite ones is when he just throws that woman out the window. Yeah. He just happens <laughs> to be at the window. Like, yeah. He's just like... Yeah, he just wait like... Yeah. What if she didn't come next to the window? Yeah. You just kind of stand yeah, there and... Yeah. I'm just going to go and <laughs> scale this house. And <laughs> yeah. Maybe someone might be at this window. If they are, I'm in luck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'll just throw him out the window. <laughs> he's all over the place. He's outside and then all of a sudden he's at the front door. Then all of a sudden he's like... Inside. Inside, w upstairs, yeah. and then he's back outside. <laughs> the effects in this movie are great, and they're done by the master himself, Tom Savini. His hands. Ugh. So disgusting looking. Yeah, 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 like his fingernails, and they're all like monster hands. Yeah, yeah I like that. I like that about it. <laughs> yeah. And they show his hands more than they show him. Right. Which is a good thing about the movie. They don't overplay and overshow Jason. You don't see him just walking around the woods like in the later movies. Just, yeah. Ch -ch 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 -ch. That's all he does is just yeah. walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has a great ending yeah. for a final chapter, for a part four. But it also leaves the window open a little bit with the Tommy Jarvis character. Our third favorite part four movie, which is Land of the Dead. It's not credited as a part four, yeah. but it's the fourth movie in George Romero's zombie series, right? Yeah. So this takes place after Day of the Dead. And at this point, uh, civilization has kind of rebuilt itself. The zombie threat is still there, but they're more of like pests. You know they're there, but they're in the back of your mind. The basic plot is that there's a big, like, rich asshole played by Dennis Hopper, and he lives the good life. Anyone else lives in complete squalor. John Leguizamo's character steals Dead Reckoning and threatens to blow up the city unless he gets paid. Dennis Hopper's character sends the hero of the movie out to go and retrieve Dead Reckoning. And he's basically got to go back into the zombie apocalypse 
to get it. It's a very cool idea for a movie. I think it's the only movie I can think of that's a zombie movie that takes place when humanity has rebuilt itself. It's stable right. again. Yeah. yeah. In Day of the Dead, it's uh, at the point where civilization has collapsed, right? And Completely, sort of, yeah. Money has no meaning anymore. Yeah. In this one, it's yeah. not trying to survive. Yeah. Now it's just making money and hoarding it and shit. Giorgio Romero with his superb social commentary. Yeah, using the zombie apocalypse as that. In each Romero movie, you see the zombies learn a little bit more mm -hmm. and progress a little bit more. It's not just rehashing the same old thing, right? Yeah. It's creating more of a difficult advers adversary for the survivors. The humans are too busy fighting each other, but the zombies are working together. Mm, exactly, yeah. And the humans just want to make money and yeah. shit, right? Yeah. Make money. Real money. <laughs> Want to make big money? <laughs> make big bucks? The cast is great in this, right? The yeah. cast and the characters. Tom Savini even makes a little cameo as oh, yeah. his biker character from Dawn of the Dead. That's right, yeah. And that brings us to our last movie, Saw 4. We learn Jigsaw's dead. The guys doing the autopsy find a tape coated in wax. And they play it, and it turns out that Jigsaw's not done. He's going to continue the games. We also get introduced to the main character, Daniel Rigg. He's a cop. Jigsaw tells him, mind your own business. But he decides to play Jigsaw's game. Exactly. And tries to save everybody. Yeah, and he just fucks everything up. If the main character just would have stayed home and went to bed, none of this bad shit would have happened. But no. Yeah. The moral of this yeah. story, right? Mind your own business. Yeah. Stay out of stuff that doesn't concern you. One of the highlights about this movie, too, is the traps. Yeah. And the, the, the kills are, are really, really good. They're attached to that motor, mm -hmm. and the chain's pulling them in, and one guy has got his mouth sewn shut, and the other guy has his eyes sewn shut. They still have to communicate in, in another way to get out of the trap. Yeah. But they don't, and they just try killing each other. <laughs> yeah. The girl with her hair caught in that contraption is a really good trap. Oh yeah, where it slowly scalps her. A lot of cringe-worthy yeah. stuff. The right? pedophile guy, he's got to like poke out his own eyes to get out of the trap. The drug addict has got to push his face oh, through right. his knives. <laughs> yeah. The backstory showing what made John Kramer the way he is, yeah. right? And then showing like his traps from the beginning and they're yeah. not so great. And then the finality of it is that he dies. But they found a way to continue his legacy, and he's still playing games with people after he's passed on, yeah. which is very cool. Yeah, it is neat. Yeah, he's like, and he's not just playing the games, but he's running the show somehow. Yeah. He's playing multiple games at once. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he's dead. So that's it. That's our top four, part four movies to kick off season four of Frightfully Forgotten. If you have some of your favorite top four movies that we haven't mentioned yet, please let us know in the comments. We are going to mention more throughout the season. More yeah. part fours are going to pop up. There's going to be more part four themed episodes happening. Yep. So stay tuned. And of course, keep drinking. Keep drinking.